Uh, another thing here, we'll get to it after the Okay, we've got a break right now. Thank you, Billy Joe. Today is August 31st. Ladies and gentlemen, do I feel stupid. Josh, you told me wrong. (laughs) No, he didn't. He didn't. I'm just kidding. We're going to be right back after this four-minute break with Bob Chapman. Stay tuned to the Power Hour. I'll get you anything, my friend, if it makes you feel all right. I don't care too much for money because money can't buy me love. It's a good thing you don't care about your money in the bank, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like we're going to be facing some serious uh, shortages in the FDIC to back up your money, which they say, hey, we can back it up for $250,000 now. It might as well be $250 million if they don't have it. Our guest today is Bob Chapman. He joins us as the editor of the financial newsletter called The International Forecaster. You can go to theinternationalforecaster.com. Now, remember to put an E in there, F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R. Or you can call 877-479-8178. That's 877-479-8178. And get a copy of the newsletter and decide if you want to subscribe to it. Now, Bob, how often are you doing the email newsletters now? It seems like they're, they're all the time, but how often are you doing them? Uh, every Wednesday and every Saturday, and it runs 35 or 40 pages each time, and, and everything that you need to know about what's going on in the world that's important is in there. Uh, we have a hard copy that goes out twice a month as well, and that's for people who are not on the Internet, which is about half the listeners. Oh, and really? so you can get you can get free copies uh, of either. Uh, we send them out by either going to the site or the phone number that Joyce cited. Uh, I wanted to say further about uh, the banks. I think what uh, we told our subscribers that first of all, uh, in, in 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 face of a possible emergency in the future, uh, people should have. In small bills, about five thousand dollars in cash, and they're safe at home. Really? This way, if there is a, uh, a bank holiday, maybe that would last you for a week or two or three, and uh, nobody's going going to be paying their bills. So, uh, if, if the banks are down uh, because uh, the checks aren't going to go through, et cetera. Uh, secondly, looking at that situation as it is. I would not personally own bank CDs, and that leads to would you be in the stock market with the exception of gold and silver stocks? The answer is no. Most uh, life policies are invested in the stock market, and if the stock market were to go back down again, the face value of your your policy would drop. Also, annuities for the most part are in stocks in the stock market. So if the stock market just returned to where it's been uh, the beginning of March of this year uh, on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, some 6,600, then uh, I would think that the value of your annuities and, and stocks and insurance would fall as well, uh, perhaps 30 or 40 percent. So people should keep this in mind. What is the alternative? I only know one, and that's gold and silver-related assets, and that's it. Uh And if you buy coins, you take delivery of them. Well, I've heard some people say that, uh, and I would like to know what your percentage of gold versus silver is, but a lot of people have told me that they like the 80-20 percentage of 80% gold and 20% silver. I I agree with that. You can go as high as 70-30 on the silver. But it's bulky. It's hard to handle. Uh, if you have a gun safe and you don't have too many weapons, I guess you can get it in there. Uh, but and and it also obviates the fact that anybody's going to carry uh, the original 300 pound safe away because you know by if you put bags in there and other things uh, like ammo, you might have a 700 pound safe. <laughs> but uh, that's the way to go, and uh, it's either. 20 or 30 percent in the silver. It all depends on how you feel about it and how much risk you want to take because there is more risk in silver than there is in gold. Uh, gold has been, continues to be, and will always be a monetary metal. 
Silver has from time to time and for long periods of time. Uh, between uh, uh, 100 B.C. and 400 A.D., almost all coins were silver. They were gold coins, but they weren't widely circulated. And so uh, you can keep history in mind. Uh, the stock market today says there's going to be a major sell-off. It's going to really go down today. What is the reason for this? Do you have any well, idea? I, I think uh, it's fundamental in nature. Uh, number one, uh, the market's way overpriced. Uh, number two, the leadership has been very poor quality stocks. Uh, number three, uh, we have uh, the United States government in the market all the time, so we don't know what's good and what isn't because of the distortion of the market. Yeah, and I understand uh, there was an overseas sell-off. We'll talk about that when we get back from this three-minute break. Stay tuned to the Power Hour. Our guest is Bob Chapman, the International Forecaster.com. To Bob Chapman, editor of the financial uh, newsletter called The International Forecaster, and it is theinternationalforecaster.com. Uh, let me ask you, platinum, do you see people investing in platinum? Does it look just like silver? I mean, how do you do it differently? Uh, I see it as tokenism. It's too heavily dependent uh, upon commercial use, and uh, because of that, I've not recommended any platinum or palladium stocks. And I don't recommend platinum, palladium coins either. Uh, the real action in this is in gold and silver. Uh, you know, why deviate? Why go to another uh, venue when you have the best venue possible in gold and silver? <coughs> Silver's come up <clears throat> in the last 10 years from $3.80 an ounce. Gold has come up from approximately <clears throat> $255 an ounce. And people have made a lot of money who have got in and stayed in, and they got a long way to go. Uh, you know, platinum and palladium have been all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I, I just feel, you know, you go to the source, and I, I think that's very important. Uh, yes, we're going to get pressure from government from time to time. You're looking at it this morning. We went up $9 in gold on Friday. They immediately took it down 9 or $10 this morning. They're playing a little game. They're arrogant about it. They don't care who knows about it. And before the day is over, gold will be better, and tomorrow it will be up. They can't influence the, you know, the market that long. But one of these days, and probably over the next couple of months, we're going to get a shot at 1,000 here. And I think it could very well go through. You, mean, so wait, you, you think gold, gold is going to go, to go up me. to 1,000? You think gold's going to go up to 1,000 pretty soon? Yes, I do. I do. You know, it's not that far away. Um, as uh, Ted said uh, earlier on, uh, well, he gave the price of platinum. He did give the price of gold. Uh, I got here at, um, it's probably around 947.48 right now because it's down uh, uh, 330 this morning. It was off 240. Right now it's down 980. So you've got uh, 740 on a 56. It's probably 49, 949 something is mm. probably where it's at. And that's a good buy, but okay. it's not far from 1,000. Okay, when we get back, we're going to talk about the markets. Stay tuned. We'll be back with Bob Chapman. 